we're back with Raful Najem, the pastor from Lowell, Massachusetts, and he is sharing with us the story of how things began in his spiritual walk. So, Raful, maybe you can begin uh, back when you came into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and just uh, refresh people so that they're up to speed and then continue. Yeah, of course. So, as we were praying like usual every morning, one of those mornings, the power of God just came over me and... Uh, as we mentioned, uh, and the release came over when, when the pastor's wife rec recognized what was what's happening on that morning, why I was having difficulty speaking. Uh, she stood between me and that young man that, was, that had demons in him. And then when the release came, the rivers of living water came out. I mean, everything changed that day because uh, now as I'm speaking in tongues, I'm walking all the way home, speaking in tongues. I went up to my bedroom speaking in tongues. I, I slept sleeping in tongues. I woke up in the morning speaking in tongues. I just couldn't control this, wow. you know. And uh, I, I became very hungry and I realized the call of God on my life. So uh, uh, my pastor at this time decided to start offering uh, Bible school classes through the Foursquare uh, Life Bible College. Uh, he built this thing in Lebanon for the first time ever. So I joined, but now What's going on, I am in, 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 I'm a senior in high school. And uh, my father became, became ill. Um, and so my mother started really uh, being in, in charge of the family. A lot of talk among the neighbors. And the talk in Lebanon, uh, I don't know if it's still happening now, but throughout the years was very difficult growing as becoming an evangelical. Or, especially Pentecostal, for these reasons. Number one is we are all, you know, anti-Israel. Anti and when you start becoming uh, involved in evangelical atmosphere, uh, you start reading about Israel and, and, and the people of God, and, and you become very angry, like why, why God is, is, is favoring the Jews and we are the Arabs. Uh, you know, what's wrong with us, <laughs> you know? And, but then there's a talk about my pastor and any other evangelical missionary that they are Israeli spies. Oh, really? Yeah. So growing up myself as a young man, I was very anti-Israel. I used to demonstrate in the streets, you know, shout against Israel. So I had a very difficult time in my mind. Even, even though you were an Orthodox mm -hmm. Christian, and uh, yeah. had that in your background. Yeah. Would you say that that was kind of normal or normative? Very for, normative for young because people? Uh, young people, especially who are in schools and college, they're very influenced by, by the Islamic, Arabic, you know, Palestinian sympathy. Very influenced. Even till today, actually, in my last trip, even Pentecostal evangelicals still till now very much uh, in favor. Uh, so the political atmosphere demands it. And, and very rare that you'll find Arab Christians that, that, know, don't, that know what really the Bible teaches about mm -hmm. this subject. So that, had become a, that became a very um, stressful to me to realize what's happening. But then other people will start saying, this man, my pastor, they were telling my mother, he likes young, young men. You know, he has like maybe a homosexual um, appetite. Wow. And then they told her that your son speaks in these foreign languages and, and, and he shakes and he cries. And so she got very concerned, very worried. So to the point is that she called the, doc the psychiatrist mm -hmm. and the doctor to come and check me out. And I was, I was just laughing, happy about it and trying to tell my mother, Please relax. Don't worry. You know, this is, a, you know. But she became very angry, and, and especially because all the neighbors, all the Orthodox neighbors start uh, really uh, kind of mocking me and making fun. Because she loved me so much, and she cared really a lot. She, she was very concerned. And, but she didn't know how to read or write. So I was not able to keep a Bible in my house more than two, three days. She'll get hold of it. She'll think it's a book from these people who, are, who have bewitched me. So she will throw it away, rip it, or burn it. But then the word went to the, to the, to the, to the dean, to the director of the school, 
and I'm just a few months left for me to graduate. And um, because I was going to this Antiochian Greek Orthodox school that was run by a bishop, you know, and, and priests. So they took me to this cave underground to meet this very old Orthodox priest. And he started doing exorcism on me because he they oh, you have, you know. And I was like, I felt so bad for him. Because I, I, I just felt so bad for him. <laughs> I knew what he was trying to do, and, and I just uh, <laughs> I just loved him and tried to explain to him, but he was just wouldn't listen. So they threatened me to kick me out. Of the school? Of the school. Okay. And when the word came to my mother, she was really now this time. She goes, you can't go to that church anymore. You cannot go to this Pentecostal evangelical. You just can't. I say, Mom, I can't not go. I have to go. So one time was a Wednesday night. She followed me. She goes, you're going there. I'm going to come with people from our family. We had a big family. It was about 1,000 members of our Najim, Najim family in, in the streets in the neighborhood that I grew up in. So many of them came with her. We've never had that many people in church. <laughs> and I was, well, I walked in there. I went right to my spot. We always pray half an hour before the service starts. And I start praying in tongues. You know, and now the church is packed. And my mother will, will go to my pastor, loose him. He goes, ma'am, he's loose. You need to be loose. Uh -huh. And I stood and I said to her, woman, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You? I did. You did that like, to your own to mother? To my own mother in front oh, of my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Now my mother's a very strong woman. She's still alive, by the way. She's 94. Uh -huh. And she lives with me. Now, she started breaking things. Uh, windows and her my family started helping her w breaking vases and all that my pastor says don't be afraid let's stay this is gonna be a beginning of a great revival and it was an amazing night he preached and many people got saved that night Wow yeah but when I went home after there was a meeting going on my family that if I continue they're gonna go and bomb the place so I was scared. I was scared for the place, for the people. Just for context, help me understand about what year this was. Uh, you said you're 17? Yes, about 1971, about 1972. 70, so it would have yeah. been after the Six-Day War. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah after 67, yeah. And, and then the other war would it be before the, that 73 war, right? No, that's, that started right after. Start, it, it began in 73, in 73, but really, really exploded in 75. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to that because right. it's very important. Yeah. But just to, to, to move on a little bit, and uh, so I, I stopped going for the sake of peace. I say, you know, I have a few months left to graduate, and when I graduate, my father's sick, I'm going to become the, bread, the breadwinner. Then I could do what I want. And I'll be 18. And um, so I stopped for one year. But the man of God that introduced me to Jesus, he used to wait for me halfway between my house and the school in his car. And he would give me the, the high beam signal. So I would go in his car and he would give me 15 minutes Bible study every day. He this is me. after you stopped going yes. to preserve the church from being destroyed. Being destroyed. Well, somebody got hurt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember in that evening when, when that chaos was going on, my mother would lift her hand to slap my pastor. Her hand would stop in the air, would come down. She did this three times to slap him, but she couldn't. Her hand, her hand would come down, you know. But the whole neighborhood now, everybody knew what's going on. Now, I graduated, I started working, uh, and my father's very sick. There's no social security, there's no insurance for us. In, in the, you know, we were nine people in two-bedroom apartment. Wow. Yeah. So I had to go to work, and I had to go to really do three jobs a day. The three jobs gave me about $400 a month. And, but because of that, I became the breadwinner. I became, you know, a man. So I said, I'm, I'm going back, Mom, sorry, that's my life. And that's when I went and joined the Bible college. And, and, and we were just having a great time. Revival broke out in that church. And 
it got filled to the capacity. Wow, well this is an amazing story. I'm so thankful that you've come to be able to share this with us. And we're just going to take another little break, but we will come back and we want for you to be attentive with us. Thank you. Thank you.